shall bend to my will. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, magnets are fun to play with and all that, but they are so important to our everyday lives, from our refrigerators to our phones. We're able to communicate over long distances, inform people of our arrival, and listen to our favorite music. Could you imagine how different life would be if we didn't have these magnet-based innovations? I'm Johnny, and welcome to All The Small Things. We'll explore a few basic items in this episode that might not seem like a big idea now, but it was certainly a big idea back then. Modern magnetic doorbells were invented by Joseph Henry in 1831, even before he went into college. Now, if his name sounds familiar, that's because he's the second most important American inventor after Benjamin Franklin. These doorbells initially only had buzzing sounds when pressed. It wasn't until the 1920s where door chimes and music were introduced. What you might not know is that the introduction of music and door chimes in the 1920s made it a very popular Christmas gift. The electronic doorbell was the precursor to the many other buttons in our lives, from our remote control to the keyboards to that power button on your PC. That's right, we had to thank the glorious doorbell for all our electronic buttons. With the magic of listening to our favourite music with a single press of a button, it wouldn't have come about without the invention of speakers. Although the magnetic portion of the speaker was invented in the 1860s, it wasn't until 1921 where the modern speaker was invented. So why the 60-year wait? The first form of loudspeakers were invented in 1861 by Johann Philip Reis. But Alexander Graham Bell, the telephone inventor, patented the electrical loudspeakers as part of his telephone patent in 1876. It was further improved in 1877 by Ernst Siemens, the founder of the now Siemens. May 1921 was when the first working prototype was invented by E.W. Kellogg. Now with clear sounding audio, it became more common for people to play their music through electronic speakers. But it wasn't until 1931 where you could play your musical instruments straight through your speakers via an amplifier. Largely inspired by the telephone speakers, George Bisham and Adolf Rickenbackerum invented the first successful electric guitar in 1931. Well, Paul H. Tumang did invent some earlier versions, but it wasn't successful. Sorry, I don't really know how to play this. <clears throat> Early electric guitars were hollow, just like the acoustic cousins. The first solid body guitar were made by Leo Fender in 1950. The first one was called the Broadcaster. But after some disputes, he then made a second one called the Esquire, which later on became known as the Telecaster. But if you ask me, they all are just guitars. Fender produces almost 90,000 guitar strings every day, which is about 20,000 miles of guitar string every year, enough to go around the world. What you guitar fans need to know is that Leo Fender, the big boss of Fender, the big company that produces lots of things but more famously known for their guitars, wasn't a guitarist. Leo Fender was a saxophonist. Let that information sink in a bit. Hmm. The doorbell, speakers, and the electric guitar. These ideas were the start of something big. So you have to wonder, what are the next big ideas changing our future? My name is Johnny, and thank you for watching All The Small Things. Tune in to The Big Idea on Channel News Asia this June.